Tom Gantert at uh, CAPCON, the Michigan Capital Confidential, news service of the Mackinac Center for Public Policy, uh, michigancapitalconfidential.com if you want to look it up, uh, just wrote a, uh, a piece on our new right-to-work law here in the state of Michigan and included a report on a study released this week by Richard Vetter, a distinguished professor of economics at Ohio University who found that incomes rise following the passage of right-to-work laws. Remember all the uh, screaming, the gnashing of teeth when right-to-work was passed in December of 2012 in Michigan? Uh, they they called it a right-to-work for less. You, you heard it on our show from the critics like Gretchen Whitmer, the uh, Senate Minority Leader, and, and others, said we were going to see lower employee wages. Well, the U.S. Department of Commerce's Bureau of Economic Analysis has found that before right-to-work became law in 2012, personal per capita income in Michigan was 38291 In 2013, the first uh, year under right-to-work, it was 39215 Income went up. You know, another area that's uh, been talked about but nothing's been done about it is prevailing wage. You know what prevailing wage is? Uh, Here's the way Alfredo Ortiz wrote about it in an op-ed in the Free Press. He's president of the Job Creators Network, a national business advocacy organization. Suppose you need your car repaired, but state law forbids you to hire the lowest cost quality mechanic of your choice. Instead, state approved mechanics charge far more and submit a blizzard of bureaucratic paperwork to prove it. And you've got to hire them. Sounds silly? Well, that's what we do with our projects that uh, involve state school district construction projects under prevailing wage here in Michigan. Alfredo's here to talk about it on the show this morning. How are you? Frank, good morning. Uh, I'm great. How are you? Thanks for having me on your show. I, I'm terrific, but I'll get better. It's good to have you with us. So uh, Michigan is, is uh, not in the majority when it comes to this prevailing wage law, is it? No, absolutely, Frank. In fact, Michigan's only one of seven states that actually require uh, taxpayers to pay prevailing wage instead of actually allowing our construction companies to pay market rate wages. Don't most of them do that anyways? Well, no, you know what? Actually, like I said, at least seven states, and, and in fact, Ohio was one that had this, and they suspended this prevailing wage law, and they actually found it saved taxpayers 11% uh, overall on school construction charges. Really? And so what are we talking about in terms of dollars saved if Michigan were to join that, that majority of states? Well, and that's the craziest thing about this, uh, Frank. This, this is truly, truly an issue of taxpayer and government waste, for example. If we were to able to repeal uh, the prevailing wage law, it would be able to save Michigan taxpayer dollars a quarter of a billion dollars. And that should be an outrage because that's a quarter of a billion dollars that, frankly, is not going into the pockets and into the hands of teachers in schools. So it's really hurting our kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there a way that it could be changed? I mean, um, obviously by statute, but what's what's holding it up? Well, you know what? It's uh, it's been tried, uh, and then unfortunately, it's been uh, you know, House and Senate have tried several times, uh, but it's uh, in court. It keeps getting held up. I think what we need is we need taxpayers to show their outrage on this. We need to say enough is enough hurting kids at a quarter of a billion dollars per year is just not right, and especially when 84% of Michigan's construction workers choose not to belong to a labor union. This is an outrage. I'm puzzled by how it gets held up in courts, though. Uh, If if right to work would go through, why could could, uh, change in prevailing wage not go through? Well, uh, and that's a great question, Frank. Unfortunately, not a, not a legal expert here, but it has survived the court challenges and nearly half a century of political attempts at a repeal. Um, again, I think at the, at the end of the day here is that taxpayers just aren't getting the right information. They're not getting the, the correct information that they need to know. Again, 84% of Michigan's construction workers choose not to pay. So this quarter of a billion dollars is just going to help 16% of the state's construction workers. And uh, in the process, we're hurting our kids. Well, I, I'll bet you you took a poll, you'd find probably 84% of Michiganders don't even know about prevailing wage laws. And, and that's a big part of it, uh, Frank, and that's why a Job Creators Network, that's one of the things that we try to do. We try to inform the public and help employers and folks out there in, in, the, in the public know about these kinds of issues, know about prevailing wage, for example, and, and, and the, the, the really how ludicrous this is um, and how it's really hurting our children. Well, glad you got it out there. Nice to have you on the show to talk about it. Thanks, Alfredo. 
Frank, thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. You too. Alfredo Ortiz, president of the National Job Creators Network.